Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft 2 replay. This one's going to take place on Shakuras Plateau. I'm the Red Terran Ketrok spawning in the bottom right hand position. And the top left is Anti-Camper, a FPS themed name, I guess. Um, and he'll be spawning in the top left hand position. So cross map shot. Uh, Shakuras Plateau. So I do have this like messed up build now I do on Shakuras, which is like, I don't know. I'm just kind of playing with it and seeing how bad it actually is and we'll find out if it works. But there's a few things that kind of conclude when I play on this map versus Zerg. One is such an easy to take and hold expansion with like the small choke points um, and the long rush distance that I expect every Zerg to open 15 hatch versus Terran. <clears throat> the other thing is, it's not that hard to find your opponent, because you never spawn vertically. If you didn't know that, you can't actually spawn vertical positions on Shakuras. It means you can only be in one in two positions, either here or here. So what I do is when I build my first uh, supply depot, at the same time I send out an SCV to scout. Now I'm looking for creep. And as soon as I find the creep, I'm going to do an engineering bay block. So I see that there's no creep here, so I immediately queue up an engineering bay right here to block his expansion. <clears throat> and as you can see, he is going for the 15 hatch, and he's, woo, it's actually pretty close. Well, it looks like he sent him out early to hide. Yeah, he didn't have the money yet for it, but he's just hiding the drone to get that position, and now he's not going to be able to get it. Uh, normally, I get more time to build this uh, engineering base, so it kind of sucks I didn't get a whole lot of hit points on it. At the same time, just letting him chase this SCV, and then when he turns away, I'm going to send the SCV back to complete this uh, engineering bay. Now, of course, 125 minerals early means I'm not building my command center at 15 supply like I normally do. So here I am at uh, 16 supply. Looks like I'm staying on my SCV now. Uh, I sent him a little bit late, so I actually went gas first. Same time, trying to get as much hit points on this as I can. And I'm going to build my command center right in the uh, the... the behind the vision blocker here, if I ever get around to it. Okay, it's kind of super late now. Uh, ideally, you still want to build this with your first 400 gas. Uh, I just was really late putting it down that I had to go gas first, but you want to go uh, command center and then get your two gas. Um, you can get the 150 gas off of one uh, refinery because you'd still have to float it over and during that time you can get the 150 gas, but since I'm going Master Ravens I want the double gas early anyways. So it looks like I'm finally getting out of here and it's down to 80 hit points, but with only two drones that's uh, still 16 hits I can take. So I'm still getting my uh, barracks and engineering bay. Looks like I only went one gas since I went so early on it. But second gas will be coming up soon, and he finally took it down. But it took him until he had lings in the field before the uh, engineering bay finally dropped. So pretty late uh, hatchery. But with the super droning, he went jumping 17 to 24 there. Oh no, actually, no, he didn't. He still had 17. Anyways, looks like he's making a bunch of zerglings. Bring up the production tab. And he's sending them out. So I'm sending my SCV back to my base and floating over my command center. And the nice thing about sending this back is he, the SCV scouts the area. I can see that there's no lings sitting here, so I know I can just I'm safe to float over my command center and land it and turn it into a fortress. However, in that little bit of time gap, boom, blocked, which really sucks. So that has messed up my fast expand, and obviously this is one of the downsides to this. This is why I always say get your command center on 15, because you need to turn into a fortress before a bunch of links can get there. So this, I basically just have to give up on it, and that's a lot of links. So I'm actually going to be sending this command center over here, and I'm going to load it up, and I'm going to take the 6 o'clock position as it's protected by destructible rocks. I'm also setting myself up to block a bailing bus because now that I don't have the fortress and the uh, and the the nice wrap on the ramp, uh, a bailing bus could come. And with that many links, I almost expect it to come. So again, it's up with tough structures here. The only weak structure is a supply depot, but you can see if he blows that supply depot away, he still isn't into my base yet. He would have to go through two supply depots. 
Um, let's say I plan to take a low ground bunker. I think this would have worked had I built a supply depot as well. You do a bunker and supply depot and then that's a, a, a solid seal. And then my marines can just uh, waste anything on the other side. But yeah, I didn't think that through quite properly. And instead, he kills all my marines. I even have to pull some SCVs to repair here. In the meantime, he has been droning like crazy, and this uh, little trick I did to try to get ahead economically is actually throwing me ridiculously far behind. 49 over 32. Um, just building SCVs from this uh, command center, I'm not upgrading it yet. Um, I want it to be a fortress for later on, but obviously I don't need it to be a fortress right now, just because you know it's 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 safe enough just from the destructible rocks. So I'm just going to pump SCVs for a while and later turn it to a fortress. Driving my command center again, and that's not going to work with that many lings there. Um, so I'm actually building a banshee with my first star port just to clear the lane. There we go, now I can finally take my natural way late into the game. At least that gives me three bases. Looks like he was going for the bailing bust, but the fortress is going to negate that some. Sixty-seven drones, oh my gosh. It's a large economic lead for the uh, Zerg here. But I'm set pretty well against Mutas. Uh, got my ring of missile turrets here. Even got some in the back here. Got my bunker as a wrap, so he has to go around that, and the fortress. So I'm in pretty good shape, I think. Poking him with some there. Oh, he comes the bailings, but obviously not enough to kill a fortress, and he can't get through to my uh, to my ramp. So I basically just lost a bunker and a handful of SCVs, which is a bad trade for him, I think. So I got my six gas going, which is pretty nice. I can pump out a lot of ravens with that. And since I'm kind of late on my Ravens, or kind of late on my getting my four star ports up, plus I have extra gas, it's going to be hard to spend all that gas, so I'm going to get both uh, Seeker Missile and Durable Materials. Normally I don't get Durable Materials, but I figure I got the extra gas anyways, and where I don't think that extra minute of duration usually helps much, I am making a thousand auto turrets typically in these games, so I may as well get all the auto turret upgrades. It's that Banshee I forgot about. Of course, the cancel on the hatchery. It's better than nothing, I suppose. Doesn't look like he knows about my third as of yet, so he probably feels really far ahead. Which he is, but not quite as far as he thought. Uh, sending out my SCV for my Ninja Command Center. I love this little pocket in the back of all the main bases. Everyone, ha Every base has it. Uh, it's a great place to build a command center that typically doesn't get scouted by an overlord or a zergling. So you can actually complete the command center, make a few SCVs, and then quickly move over, land it, make a fortress, throw up some missile turrets, and hopefully ninja an expo before he comes and destroys it with all his mutas and zerglings. Zerg, however, is taking his fifth base. And yeah, he scouted this base, so now that I know his mutas are the south, and I can see these rocks going down, I know his attention's there, I'm going to attack the north. So I'm moving through, and weirdly place overlords are actually going to spot me, which isn't good. I have to avoid them, and then these ones definitely spot me. Again, anyways, looks like he has enough failings here if they connect. Uh, um, SCV is for preparing the wrong stuff. I'll slow down a bit here. So, but I'm getting down some good harassing. We just got these here. Hopefully, I can get these Evo chambers down before they finish their upgrades. Uh, hitting his expo. It's natural, and I should move on to the rest of the bases soon. So it looks like this uh, Evo chamber is actually going to finish, which is kind of sucks. So now he has three two lings, which can massacre auto turrets. Plus he has altars on the way if we bring up the production tab. Four altars on the way, which also massacre auto turrets. But uh, 
But he decided to turn into a base trade instead of killing the auto turrets. He had the right stuff to counter it. Even Zerglings, once he got the 3-2 ups, just massacre auto turrets. So he is going to bust through here, especially since I wasn't fully repairing that. Uh, at the same time, I have put auto turrets on his third, and now moving on to his fourth. This is the nice thing about Ravens. Uh, you know, if you don't have to put down a million auto turrets, you can actually harass every single base at once, basically. It doesn't matter if he has six, seven bases. Uh, he's coming up my ramp down, trying to throw up some emergency bunkers, pumping some marines. But yeah, he's in, and he's through. But that's auto turrets on all his bases. One, two, three, four, and five. So now it's just turning into a gigantic base race. I'm lifting off with my star ports. There goes the failings. I still got one base left up here, which is just starting to get going. Got the uh, missile turrets and the um, planetary fortress. However, it is envisioned to him. He knows it's there. Losing all my supply depots. And just moving around the Ravens, looking for any bases. Uh, whoops, missed that. He bailing bonds my fortress, and my fortress just disappeared. And with the end of that fortress and the SCV making this refinery, if you bring up the units tab, you can see I have zero SCVs. And where I have a lot of resources, 800 gas and 2,000 minerals, I'm screwed because zero SCVs, 44 over 11 harvest, uh, supply. That means I'm supply capped and no way to build supply depots right now. So if I want to make units, I basically have to throw a whole bunch of seeker missiles into my own ravens and take them out of the game. Uh, which I was contemplating later on, so we'll get to that though. So let's play some auto turrets here to see re take down the remainder of his tech. I'm just kind of destroying his buildings. Uh, I see a refinery here with an altar list protecting it, so... Auto turrets can kill one altar if you put down enough of them. They do very little damage to altars once they have all this uh, armor. With five armor, uh, we're only doing two damage per attack. So that is down. So that's every structure I know about is gone from the game. Switched to my view, all I can see is uh, kind of overlords and stuff. Well, there's still this bailing nest, but it's limited for life. So this point is floating around, just kind of trying to f see if there's any uh, structures I can kill. So here's one. Throwing down the auto turrets, killing off a bunch of drones, which is nice. You can see his drone count is down to 10. Still can't spend any of my money. I got four star ports and overall command. I can't really use it. Orbital's just kind of sitting here. And obviously this many altar lists is pointless versus auto turrets. Or pointless is auto turrets versus them. Uh, this was a nice little find here. Uh, if we back it up a touch, normally I don't suggest you running your flock of ravens into uh, infestors, because you're, you're going to get fungled before you can get the uh, seeker missiles off. I usually just use auto turrets to set up like zoning, so like, you know, make a zone, like if I put some auto turrets along here, then I know that the uh, infestors can't run up and try to poke away at my Ravens. However, I noticed that he has no high ground site here. So if we switch to his view, he has no idea that the... Uh, I can go right up to the edge of this here and he'll never actually see my Ravens. So here he comes. It's very little time to react and I was actually able to get the secret missiles off and get out of there before I got bungled. And with one Infestor left and I got a little bit of detection here with my 22 <laughs> Ravens. Uh, I'm able to finish off his last infestor, so that's the end of his anti-air. I mean, he does have one muta he forgot about here, but that's it for anti-air. Um, something I didn't consider here, right here would be an awesome place for auto turrets. You know, you can pick away at the hatchery or the altar is, nothing you can do about it. But I decided to put some on the high ground up here. Difficult base for him to defend with altars, he would surely split them, put half on the high ground, half on the low ground. And 
just throwing down as many auto turrets as I can here, and then just set, put all the focus fire in the hatchery. I want to kill this hatchery just to find out if he has more structures or not. And obviously trying to kill auto turrets would just be completely pointless, so I'd barely be able to tickle them. And with taking down that hatchery, that is the end of the game. Um, I was actually considering... What just happened? that restart? Cool. I was actually considering killing off my uh, remaining ravens just to make a couple of banshees because I figured I could end the game with banshees. Yeah, so this is an example of why you probably don't want to trade bases when you're up against ravens. Ravens, like, especially when there's not a whole lot to worry about. All you gotta do is throw down, like, maybe 200, 300 energy versus auto turrets and move on to the next base. Uh, my initial group of ravens had was able to auto turret up every single base of his and have plenty of energy left over to do other stuff with. And yeah, I found it interesting this game just because of the weird opening that uh, developed and then the weird ending in that I had a lot of money, a lot of infrastructure with an orbital and, uh, and star ports everywhere. However, I was unable to build anything. Uh, I can't make an SUV and I'm supply capped. So, yeah. It occurred to me after the game there's two effective ways I could spend this money. Uh, one of them's fairly obvious, and one of them's like probably something that's never been used before in a game of StarCraft, but I still think it would have had some uh, legitimate value this game. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll leave that to you guys, see if you can figure out two ways I can spend men money effective in this spot with no SCVs and supply capped, and without killing off my ravens. And, uh, yeah, see if you guys can get in the comments, and if not, I'll let you know. You guys know the answer in my next video. So with that, we'll jump into the, uh, we'll do like a thumbs up link this time. So thank you everyone, and goodbye. Check the descri description for my thumbs up link.